Good evening. Morning, I think. You're right there. My name's Lenny. What's yours? Ruth. been a wonderful summer, hasn't it? Remarkable. Would you like something? A drink of some kind. An air pair teeth. Anything like that. No thanks. I'm glad you said that. We haven't got a drink in the house. Mind you, we'd soon get some in if we had some kind of party, you know? Some kind of celebration. You must be connected to my brother in some sort of way. The one who's been abroad. I'm his wife. I wonder if you can advise me. I've been having a rough time with this clock. The tick's been keeping me up. The only trouble is, I'm not all that convinced it was the clock. I mean, there are a lot of things which tick in the night. Don't you find that? All sorts of objects which, in the day, they're just commonplace. They give you no trouble. But in the night, any given one of them is liable to be starting out of a little bit of a tick. Whereas in the day, they're just commonplace. They're as quiet as mice in the daytime. So, all things being equal, the question of me saying it was the clock that woke me up, well, that could very easily prove to be something of a false hypothesis! Isn't it funny? I've got my pajamas on. And you're fully dressed. Mind if I have one? Ah, yes! It's gonna be funny seeing my older brother after all these years. Just the sort of tonic my father needs. I mean, I was surprised myself when I saw old Teddy. Ted. Last time I checked, I thought he was in Montreal. You've just come back from Europe. 
What? Both of you? Yes. You sort of live together, do you? We're married. On a visit to Europe, eh? Seen much of it? We've just come from Italy. Oh, so you went to Italy first, did you? And then he brought you over here to meet the family. Did he? Well, the old man will be pleased to see you. I can tell you. Good. What did you say? Good. Where'd you go in Italy? Venice. <laughs> Not dear old Venice, eh? That's funny. You know, I always thought that if I was a soldier, let's say in the last world war, say in the Italian campaign, I'd probably find myself in Venice. Yeah. I most certainly would have. I've gone through with it with my battalion. Do you mind if I hold your hand? Why? Just a touch. Just a tickle. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. One night, not too long ago, one night down by the docks, I was standing alone under an arch, watching all the men jibbing the boom out in the harbor and playing about the yard arm when a certain lady came up to me and made me a certain proposal. This lady had been searching for me for days. She eventually lost track of my whereabouts. However, she eventually caught up to me, and when she caught up to me, she made me this certain proposal. Well, normally this type of proposal wasn't entirely out of order. And you know what? I would have subscribed to it. The only trouble is, she came down with a disease. So I turned it down. Well, this lady was very insistent with me and started taking liberties with me down under this arch. Liberties which by any criterion I couldn't be expected to tolerate. The facts being what they were. So I clubbed her one. It was on my mind at the time to do away with her. You know, for a killing. And as far as killings go, it would have been a simple matter. Nothing to it. Her chauffeur, who located me for her, he'd pop around the corner to have himself a drink. Which just left me and this lady, you see. All alone. In the arch. No one about. All wild. On the western front. Here she was. Just sliding down the wall following the blow I'd given her. Everything was in my favor for a killing. Don't worry about the chauffeur. He would have never said a word. He was an old friend of the family. But then I thought, ah, why go through all the bother? You know, getting rid of the corpse and getting myself into a state of tension. So instead I just gave her another belt in the nose, a couple turns of the boot, and sort of left it at that. How did you know she was diseased? How 
How did I know? I decided she was. You're my brother. You're newlyweds, are you? We've been married six years. He's always been my favorite brother. Did you know that? And my God, are we proud of him here. Doctor of philosophy and all that. It really leaves quite the impression. Of course, he's a very sensitive man. Isn't he, old Ted? I often wish I was as sensitive as he is. Have you? Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. I'm not saying I'm not sensitive. I, I am. I could just be a bit more so. That's all. Could you? Yes. Just a bit more so. That's all. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not sensitive. When it comes to atmosphere, I'm very sensitive. But I tend to get a bit desensitized when people start to rub me the wrong way. Excuse me. Shall I move the ashtray out of your way? It's not my way. It seems to be in the way of your glass. The glass was about to fall, or the ashtray. It was going to make a big mess in the carpet. It's not me. It's my father. He's obsessed with order and clarity, and he does not like a mess. So as I believe you're not smoking at the moment, I'm sure you won't object if I move the ashtray. And now I think perhaps I'll relieve you of your glass, too. I haven't quite finished yet. You've consumed quite enough, in my opinion. No. I haven't. Quite sufficient, in my opinion. Not in mine. Leonard. Don't call me that. Please. Why not? That's the name my mother gave me. Just give me the class. No. Fine. I'll take it then. If you take the glass, I'll take you. How about me taking the class without you taking me? How about I just take you? You're joking. You're in love anyway. Another man. You've had a secret liaison with another man. And then you come here without a word of warning to make trouble. Have a sip. Go on, have a sip from my glass. Uh, sit on my lap. Take a long, cool sip. Put your head back and open your mouth.
lie on the floor. Go on. I'll pour it down your throat. What's that supposed to be? Some kind of proposal? <laughs> oh. I was thirsty. What was that supposed to be? Some kind of proposal?